Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny. And I'm Matt. And this is our guest, the renowned Tim Cast. Yes. Thank you, sir. For... Renowned. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so today... what circles you're asking in? <laughs> in our circles, you're renowned. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and today we're going to talk about Curse of the Weaver Queen. Uh, this is something that, that you have published about almost 10 years ago. Um, oh, good Lord. Was it that long? In 2013. Know, gotta, yeah. Well, I wrote it a lot longer ago than that. Uh, no, no, it's uh, 13. It's only nine years. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, don't rush eight us. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. <laughs> yeah, and I wrote it about a year before that. Uh, and, you know, did time play test and whatever. And Eldridge put it out. And uh, Eldridge was, um, it was a great idea. There were some talented people there. There was one colossal ego that could not be gotten around. Oh, no. And so Eldritch burned out. Oh, that, that's unfortunate. But it was, yeah. But this is, you, you bring this back. It looks like you're um, redesigning it as a, as a box set this time. Uh, could yeah, you tell us well, about that? I sold the rights to uh, Jared uh, Nielsen at uh, World of Game Design back before the pandemic and um what what we did what i did was when i sold it to him as i expanded it considerably from this uh in this there'd been a couple of uh interesting avenues that you could go down that i left up to the dms to go down and nowadays um not enough DMs are capable of taking that kind of an initiative and making something out of when you give them all the recipe, all the ingredients, even a pot to cook it in. <laughs> so I cooked it for them. Okay. And so now it's, it's gro grossly, greatly expanded um, in that there are many more opportunities for things to happen and uh, many more places to go, et cetera. Um, I had, uh, simply stated that certain things could be, if you found these books, they could be done. Um, and now it's okay. Here's how to try to do them. So it, this is a word that drives everybody I've ever worked with crazy, but it was, I fluffed it out a bunch. Sure. Okay, and uh, that's always been my problem is that I don't put enough stuff in because I already know it and I forget, oh, I got to tell them that or I got to show them how to do that or whatever. So anyway, Jared got a hold of it. He had some conversos, uh, you know, people translate it. And so it's been redone into um, a DCC and a 5E. 5e is the big seller right now you know the big numbers and dcc and od and d are easily measurable uh, and to top that off world of game design is developing an app that uh will enable you to uh scan a qrl code or some something or other and uh get it converted to whatever you asked for whatever wow. you, you know, first edition, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm trying to help him find some uh, conversion people now so that when the app rolls out, you'll be able to do this. So it's not just a DCC 5E, it's an everything. And instead of what we did at Eldridge, trying to make a universal set that you could therefore interpret, World of Game Design is going to do all the interpretation for you. Here it is. Okay, bang. Um, not to be terribly critical, but a lot of the uh, younger players have had everything handed to them on a, on a plate, <laughs> already translated, already, you know, and um, it, that was, it's still hard for me to assimilate that concept that people can't do what we did. Now, we did it out of necessity. We'll make up our own stuff. We had to extrapolate on things, you know. And I always thought that was part of the, that was one of the best parts of doing it, was putting your imagination into it. 
Well, now, you know, the only reason we made the first module was so we could run tournaments and make lots of money. And now look. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants a module for everything. <laughs> yeah, they want a canned adventure so they don't have to put anything into it. And there's a whole school of thought that thinks they can't put anything into it. Oh. Half rules is written. Yeah. Module yeah. is written. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. And, and, and it's, it's a shame because fantasy role playing is, you know, the, the fantasy part is being morphed and, and, and mutated into fantasy means it's got orcs and dragons instead of your fantastic spins on things you as the dm you as the players used to be you could write a description of a glittering cave and end it with just think of and you know it's metagaming just think of the neatest cave you ever saw on a documentary whatever that's what it <laughs> looks like and everybody sure. was okay with that now you got to describe the walls and how they're crenellated and how and up and, and, and how they and they're craggy and they got dark spots uh, that's too many words <laughs> that's yeah, too many yeah. words yeah i um i know what you mean i've been buying a lot of uh old tsr modules uh the used stores and i'm amazed how short they are y you guys fit whole adventures into 18 pages well and, and you did it by leaving lots of blank space yeah. That's because we expected the people that were going to use them to flesh out the other 14 that they needed. Yep. With yep. their imaginations, their experiences, the books they read, the sources they their imagination draws from. That yeah. apparently is a lost skill. Oh dear. I'd like to give seminars and charge money and cons for that. You should. You should. <laughs> I would pay for that. <laughs> he has all those extra stuff then now there's very little room for you to put your own spin into it unless unless you're one of those bold people that says <laughs> scribbles out three lines and yep. says i'll rewrite that part myself <laughs> and those are the ones i applaud yeah now yeah. i write a pretty good adventure i'm not i'm not downplaying and i know lots of people that do but you don't need them you don't need them i could start a campaign <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> if i had you know five or six players i could start a campaign tomorrow with no modules no nothing except my imagination or stuff i drew out on my own some time ago because i have another eight seven or eight adventures sitting behind this stone wall here um <laughs> that i self-published and never made it to eldridge because of eldridge's problems but I've got another, I've got at least a half a dozen that would just probably take three days worth of uh, fluffing and they'd be ready. Well, that's exciting news. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember a story and you can tell me if this is apocryphal or not, that Gary said that the big secret was that you didn't need all the stuff that you guys published to run the game. You know, I saw that being debated on Facebook today. And I believe that, yes, Gary said something like that. Because I heard Gary say things into my ears like that as we were having discussions, both sessions, what, you know, what blues, we used, I used to call them the blue sky talks we used to have. Right. And that was a topic of a, a, one of many topics in a particular blue sky talk about, you know, they're going to look behind the curtain one of these days, <laughs> you know, and they're going to find, they're going to look behind the curtain. And they never did. So, yeah. Okay. But, but on the do. other side, we do want to sell this Kickstarter. So yes. Yeah. Well, right now, what what they're doing, and and I don't pretend to completely understand the whole process. I believe they're doing subscriptions. Hi, okay. as I understand it. Yeah. Hi, I'm interested. Let me know. And when they get enough of those, then they roll it out the next day. Hmm. It's, it's okay. ready to roll, is my understanding. So. They're in the, you know, uh, and we have a, they have a date. I'm not at liberty to share that it's aimed at right now. And if subscriptions hit whatever their number is, it rolls. If not, 
we'll just do it 14 days later or whenever we hit that that number. Now, okay. I say we, but I have nothing to do with any of the metrics of this. That's entirely World of Game Design and Old Guard Games. Um, that's entirely in, in the, their hands. Um, I'm just relaying what I know about it. Okay. All right. It's well, got new art. It's been expanded. Jared's put his touch in it. Um, and I, I, have, I haven't, I don't believe I've read the, the I don't care. Uh, but I haven't seen even the, the complete final manuscript. I've seen some of the layout. I've seen some of the art. You know, we've all seen the cover, uh, the box. I am excited that it is going to be a box set. It is going to be greatly expanded upon how much of that. I don't know yet how much of that uh, world of game design, you know, put into it. All I know is that it started with my Weaver Queen. I expanded on it, sold it to them, and they ran with it. Cool. I, I'm sure a lot of my, I know a couple of my original maps, I'm sure will be in there. <laughs> um, they maybe have been rendered by somebody else, but they have to because I designed the temple. Mm. And right. it, you know, and it, it, it's relevant to the story, et cetera, and the shape of the temple and the architecture. So I'm pretty sure that'll probably remain the same. But as for the rest of it, who knows? So um, if someone, I'm sorry. No, uh, go ahead. It's your I, I was going to say, if someone hasn't encountered this before, like they don't, they don't know the the Eldritch Weaver Queen, uh, how would you describe this this adventure? Who is it for? Um, well, I used to think that all, all my adventures were thinking players' adventures. <laughs> I've been disappointed so many times that I no longer use that <laughs> term. Um, it's it's a but it is, it's a, you're not going to kill your way through right off the bat if you don't think, all right? Mm. I, don't, I don't make killer adventures. Every adventure I've read, ever written can certainly kill you many times over, but only if you're stupid or incredibly bad, lucky. <laughs> okay, no, I'm serious. It would, it would not make sense to make an adventure that isn't winnable. Right. Right. Even if it's a temple of elemental evil, there are <laughs> people who have lived through that. I hope so. I'm playing it now. <laughs> well, okay. Um, <laughs> don't get your hopes up. <laughs> and he's running it, so we'll see. Well, there's, there, uh, you know, it, it's just like when I create a monster, I give it an Achilles heel. Right. Um, when I exaggerate a monster like um, there's probably one of the next ones I'm going to do is uh, the uh, Snake Riders of the Ardondo. I'm I've already gotten the second one written on that one some time ago, and so we're gonna I'm gonna do an expanded uh, Island of Ardondo, and I made up a whole race of Fey, hmm. but I gave them strengths and I gave them weaknesses. I created a list a a, a a type of monster that I call a construct. So it's neither here nor there from this plane or that plane, but in both. And, uh -huh. um, you know, I'm, and when I do create something, unlike when I did the boulet, because I only had a half a page. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, I, I like to write up the whole story and the backstory and, you know, give them some in, indication of their e ecology and their their habits you know or whatever i don't just make up big hairy things with lots of hit dice i try <laughs> to make up something that has a a logic in, in at least an internal logic to it yeah and they, everything everything has <clears throat> pardon me everything has to be beatable or nobody's going to want to play the game anymore now can you and i with our uh, the, can the three of us with our 12th level decked out jingling with magic guys go kill a dragon? Probably not. <laughs> now, if we had eight other guys as powerful as we, maybe. But th that's the whole thing. There's got to be risk for the reward. Right. And I right. try to make it commensurate. And how people determine how many hit points it's worth or whatever, I don't give a damn. Because <laughs> everybody uses a different system anyway. Right. Right. Um, you know, or, or has quirks in their, in their, in their group, you know, on how they do it. And so I don't care about that. But if I'm, if I make something really nasty, they've got to have 
a weakness that can be exploited to the play, the player's advantage because it's a, after all it's about the players having a good time. Yep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, in my past, when I kind of came back, pardon me, out of all those years of not being in the industry, I had a deserved reputation of about an eighty percent TPK rate for the first several <laughs> years at conventions, and toward the end of that people are coming looking for glorious ways to die so they can go back and tell their buddies how i killed them and then i got cancer and i did chemo and had some profound had some time to do profound thinking Mm -hmm. and that's when i went to the wheel of blame and i'm not into tpks as a as a thing anymore in fact the first few times i ran the wheel at various conventions i'm not gonna die no but i hope you'll have some fun (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, and now now it's more of a fun game than it is you know you can still die but i give you a bunch of potions that will put a head back on a neck or an arm back on a trunk or, <laughs> it's like, yeah, i i did well um i was advised to do something because of my tpks it wasn't fair to kill a guy 40 minutes into a into a game that he probably paid money to get into so every group went out with a few of these so el stupido got to keep playing <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy that just <laughs> didn't believe, didn't believe me. I said, now tell me again exactly what you're going to do. And he oh, dear. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, fine. All right. Um, so I, I do that and I still put those in and I do the wheel of blame. Um, I do it online. I just, oh, last one I ran online was a bunch of guys in Okinawa. Wow. And nice. yeah, isn't the internet wonderful? I can run a game for a bunch of guys in Okinawa. <laughs> of course i gotta uh, oh the at the time difference is a <laughs> really like nine o'clock on a sunday morning <laughs> oh god yeah yeah i, I was ready to die you know? <laughs> it might have been a saturday morning after i did a a, a curmudgeon because i always oh. do my curmudgeons after midnight on friday oh okay yeah i love your curmudgeons they're great yeah boy i've done a lot of those but they're a lot of fun there's a lot of fun. Well, I, I have I have fun doing them most of the time. Good. I generally, uh, I just generally try to stick to uh, replying to comments rather than making it into a soapbox. Though the last one I did get a little soapy a couple of times because I didn't have many comments because everybody wasted their time saying happy birthday. <laughs> and so uh, I did address a couple of things. And, and I, I hope I dropped a bomb with uh, who needs alignments anyway. Yes. I yeah I heard I saw that one I saw that one today. Yeah, the only reason that we put alignments in at the beginning was just to give people, like I said, it was fences to keep the cows under control. <laughs> you know uh, that's all it was. Yeah. It was it was just like no, if you're going to be this, then you can't do that. Yeah, and we yeah. we we were teaching more. Some people had to be taught morality. <laughs> Some people fell right into it. Understood again. If, if, Right off the bat, they understood what was going on. Some, I, I, well, this, you you can edit this out. I got to tell you about a game I ran. Yeah, please. <laughs> a friend of mine had these three friends that had all done time, hmm. and they learned to play D anD D in the joint. Okay. So I was at I was in his city at a convention. This was many years ago, at a convention. And he wanted me to come to his house and run a game for him and his buddies. And they promised me, un- promised me untold delights and inducements. I said, yeah, sure. Let's go have a good time. Well, I, I've handed out pre-gens. And I made sure one of them was a paladin. Now, I didn't know what I was going to be facing with these guys. Right. But at one time, I started to break out in a cold sweat on the back of my neck when both the guy playing the paladin and I were up on our knuckles, leaning over the table at each other. And I'm telling him, no, you can't do that as a paladin. And I wasn't too sure he wasn't going to clobber me. Oh, All right. <laughs> I'm down here in this gloomy. Yeah, this is palatial digs compared to the gloomy basement we were in. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for torches in the walls, you know, and he, we I had to keep riding herd on these guys. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Come to find out after the fact, these guys had never played anything but evil characters in oh. general. 
no, no <laughs> redeeming values. <laughs> All they did is, you know, and they they killed every. Oh, oh God, what a game that was! But I didn't get clobbered, and he didn't kill those orc babies. Okay. Oh no, he was going to torture. That's right, he was going to torture Tor- by plugging what? out eyes. The babies. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever. It, I mean, it was so heinous. It was so unpaladin. It wow. was almost nasty for an anti-paladin. <laughs> okay, I mean, it was that heinous. He was going to pluck out their eyes one at a time, join the torture, and then would give them information. And they were, you know, oh, no. no oh, no. <laughs> no. Too many dice rolls. No. <laughs> but, okay, you can edit that out later. I didn't oh, have no, that's gold. That's gold. We're keeping that. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so you get all kinds of groups, you know. I've yeah. run games at cons where I had a whole bunch of kids at the table. That's fine. I uh, when Gary Khan was first going um, uh, virtual, uh, two days running, I had these two boys from uh, Northern Ireland, and um, they were like ten and eleven. Oh my God, they reminded me what it was like to be enthusiastic. And they asked too many questions. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. When you, most of the time you get a, you look like frogs on a log, you know, sitting there, nobody, nobody even goes rivet. They just wait for their skills and abilities to tell them something. These yeah, boys, yeah. The first, the first game, they wanted to burn everything. They were going to set it on fire, find out what's in it. And finally I stopped them on the third or fourth thing they burned up. And I says, what if this is full of rare scrolls and books of magic? Oh, well, the next day they came back with hammers and chisels. <laughs> you could chisel everything open. <laughs> I mean, you could, they're like two little beavers, you know, on two legs. <laughs> oh, man, those sound oh, like God, some they great were players. Fun. Oh, that's they great. Okay. And then, yeah, every once in a while you get a group like that, it reminds you. Uh, that uh, you know the 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 amazement factor, the awe and wonder that is fantasy. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially at its primal, primitive levels. Remember what it was like, you know, through a six-year-old's eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's great. And I, you know, we we lose sight of that because we're all older, jaded adults. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> no, I'm one of the older, so <laughs> I know. Uh. All right, so um, the Curse of the Weaver Queen, like I said, um, go to World of Game Design, go to Kickstarter, look up Curse. I'm, that'll probably find it for you right there. I, I, again, I don't know all the technical procedures with Kickstarters and that. I've, I've subscribed to a three, I think, in all the years that I've ever done mm-hmm. it. It turned out great, so. Yeah, yeah. Including one from Ken Whitman. So <laughs> probably the only good one he ever did. But... Uh, <laughs> That's that's what you know. It, it's there. Um, we're not too far off. I I, th- I I I have a suspicion that it'll be early in uh, February. All right. Is going to is, is the uh, scheduled kickoff date. Um, we used to, um, you know, we used to say, okay, this is an adventure. So for so many players, well, this is this was originally for levels of five to seven that's O D and D five to seven O D and D are tough hmm. yeah i mean we used to retire at 10 yeah because it weren't fun yeah. to play anymore and uh at eldritch we had a um, a ranking system on the back uh, of how deadly and this is the only one that ever had eight out of ten tombstones <laughs> oh, wow. well done sir well done it can be quite deadly as but, i would expect <laughs> you know i i rely on the fact i rely on the buyers to exercise smarts when they play it yeah i hope that i'm not misplaced in those, <laughs> in those wishes <laughs> some days well, I'm, some days i look at facebook and i wonder <laughs> they'll they'll learn well they'll they're learn. also they'll go on to play warhammer oh. <laughs> any questions manny uh so curse of the weaver queen the the story um now you had you have such many years of experience writing stories and, and editing stories um 
it's all about a poor young woman who in the prime of her nubile youth is selected by this sect and forced to undergo, undergo a horrible rite. Normally, the rite, they, they collect 10, hoping to get one that'll work. <coughs> Hers worked and that's Oh dear, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, and I had a big argument with my partners over this cover art. This cover art's by a young lady from Sweden. And um, two of my partners were adamant that she looked too morose. And, and, you know, there was, and I said, that was the whole point. Right, I right. like being the Weaver Queen. I like that. And yeah. there is an opportunity to attempt, small chance, but to attempt to reverse the process. And, you know, if everything goes right, they'll, they'll get her blessing to, yeah, go ahead and try. I know it might kill me, but, you know, it's better than what I am now. And uh, that, that was the whole thing. She didn't want to be what she was. And if they chose to speak with her, rather than just trying to kill her, yeah, yeah. they would find this out. Oh, those, oh, we found those books. That's what they're all about. Ah, right, okay, right. Because the books are the books are findable before the Weaver Queen is reachable. Right. If right. you do old school, explore everything on that level before you go down. Right. And you, right. you know, if you do a methodical search, uh, they are findable in the early part of the of the adventure. If you haven't found them and you make established friendly contact. Well, then, oh, back you go and go search for them again. <laughs> all right, all right. If, if, a spoiler warning one, one in here, Manny. <laughs> there's, when no we edit this. <laughs> there's no spoilers there. You get that and reading the blurb on the back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if, if if I may ask, where if, if where did the idea for this story come from? Was this was this a, an event? And I gotta, I gotta, <clears throat> I gotta say something here. Um, I stayed out of the hobby for about 18 or 19 years. Had nothing to do with it whatsoever. I got on with my life. I was a soccer coach. I raised my kids, all this stuff. And um, when I came back into the industry, I came back as a guest auctioneer at Gen Con in 2006, one night. And the rest was history. I did it for 10 years. Hmm. Um, I, made, I, I made a point of not reading anybody else's stuff. Hmm. Because at the time that I was coming back to Gen Con, I was writing furiously. I had a new adventure every year that I came back to Gen Con. I had a group of big deep pocket collectors that, want, that, pay, that paid a lot of money for a numbered copy of that adventure and to Ooh. play in it. I was making four figures on this little side side gig I had going. <laughs> so that's where the bunches of them in back of me behind that rock right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret panel. <laughs> well, but you gotta know where the other rock is to push. Yeah, that's um, right, that's right. <laughs> but that's what uh, drove me to write those. And so they are admittedly um, leaner than anything that I would normally publish because they are mostly for me to run the game for them and to give them a copy of what I ran it from because the hope was that these will eventually see print in, you know, in a bigger fashion. And so they'll have pre-pub copies and they're all signed and numbered, you know, and uh, some of them have already changed hands for more than what they sold for. Um, and, and that's, I, I don't care. Once, <laughs> once I got my initial money, I don't give a damn what you do with them. Uh, <laughs> and no, I mean, why, why would I? Uh, sure. So uh, <clears throat> that's where they, that's where the incentive for them came from. I've got one in there and, and I got, I hired, you know what i the best artists i could afford at the time um i on the on the agreement that when i get paid for these this is how much i'll give you and everybody was like yeah okay i trust you and 
So I did everything on spec. And I've got one that you're not sure. I wrote it ambiguously. Is it a, um, is it a uh, rocket ship? Hmm. Or is it an enchanted tower? Hmm. Hmm. It has little automatons that serve it. Goes either way. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, what is it doing? It's collecting things. So is it harvesting you know, stuff it doesn't have? Or is it a scientific expedition? Huh. Is it the wizard? What's he doing? He's collecting things. Huh. Okay. All right. So it goes either way. Um, oh, we, oh, there was a great, a great event um, at, at GaryCon. Um, Michael Curtis writes a lot of stuff for DCC and, and um, Goodman Games. Right. He was playing... He was playing in this game and he was playing it as it happened. He was playing a dwarf. And in this game, there are two really, even, even for them, extraordinarily large polar bears that have all been kind of ensorcelled sort of to walk on their hind legs and like guard dogs don't let anything near. Right. And so um, I had written up in my, my mechanic. So if one of the bears got a hold of one of the players, what kind of dice rolls would I need for it to break their back? <laughs> the player's back. Right, you know. right. <laughs> or, you know, yeah, right. The bear's back. Well, um, as it so happened, they were, they were stymied by these bears pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. And they had found a potion that they knew was giant strength. They didn't know what giant or anything. They just knew it was giant strength. So Mike Curtis took the potion, says, I'm going to drink the potion. So he went up, drank the potion, found out it was hill giant strength. So here's a dwarf with hill giant strength, strides up to that bar, that bear, bar, it sounded like David Crockett, strides <laughs> up to that bear who's kind of befuzzled, trying to reach down and, and, and he goes up, throws his arms around the lower portion of this bear's spine in the approximate area of its pelvis and breaks its back. Because <laughs> I just reversed the mechanic that I'd made. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he walks over to the other one. And he breaks its back too. <laughs> and so he became he became the bear breaker. Sure. But then everybody started teasing him about where exactly was your face when you're grabbing that bear? <laughs> <laughs> After all, that bear is eleven feet tall, and it's still yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> dwarf's not even four feet so uh, yeah if you if you ever have occasion to see mike curtis tell him uh i salute the bear breaker the bear breaker i'll remember that yeah, i've played in a game with him. two giant polar bears <laughs> and of course if that had been a game he'd have gotten all the xp for that yep incredibly yeah, stupid feat <laughs> that's so, fantastic so so if i may ask what's what's next for you I think I'm going to redo um, the um, the Arredondo into another larger adventure. I've been approached by a couple of different companies <coughs> or individual cartels. <laughs> no, no, the wrong word. Whatever they are. Uh, yeah, uh, groups of individuals wanting me to do a Kickstarter, and they're 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 competent individuals who probably know what they're talking about. So I'm definitely looking at that. I have an adventure that's been boiling around in the back of my head for a whole bunch of years. It involves a little bit of time travel. Ooh. <laughs> and the adventurers who set out, you know, in their chain mail and you know, standard medieval. Right. right. Um, go through a pair of raw in nondescript rocks or whatever. They're going to be transported to Central America in about the 14th century. Oh. Or, no, actually, they're going to be a little earlier because they're going to be uh, at the high at the at the beginning of the decline of the Mayan Empire right. and the beginning of the rise of the Aztecs. The Aztec scouting parties in that will be uh, classified as monsters because mm -hmm. they'll be mostly in Amico. However, what I'm going to do with the players is I'm going to make them appear to be cloud people. There's a myth in South America about a, a race of people that, that predated the Inca. 
who lived up even higher than the Inca ah. and who were known as great traders and were welcome anywhere. Huh. Now, any of the Native American uh, histories that you look in, traders were always diplomatic immunity because everybody wanted what the trader had because he had things you didn't. Right. So I'm going to make them in the cloud people. That will account for their paler skin and, and et cetera. They won't be in metal. All their metal will be transmogrified. Oh, wait, I might sure. offend the religious people there. It'll be transformed. <laughs> and uh, they'll be in um, period, period appropriate attire with the same ability. So if they've got armor equivalent to yeah. chain mail, well, that fancy leather uh, caress they, they have on and those uh, fancy leather trousers, which could be explained away because they're cloud people. Right. Uh, you know, and semi-mythical. So that should give them <clears throat> some diplomatic immunity at some points. But then it involves um, running into Aztecs, finding a uh, pocket of Olmecs. Um, let's see, it was it Olmecs or Totemecs? The ones that came just before the Mayas. Totemex, uh, finding a, a small pocket of them. All their gold and stuff will be transformed into blocks of jade and packets of salt and bundles of feathers and cocoa beans. All the lingua franca of the time. So they'll be well equipped to be traders. And they're going to have to find three different pieces of a jade mask and um, three different uh, ruined Mayan cities because of. The Mayan city, the Mayan capital, started out deep in the jungle, and they, they used up all the fields and all the timber, and they moved closer to the coast. This is, this is true stuff. And then they moved closer to the coast yet. So they'll have to go to all three of these, all of which will have ruins. I'm going to have um, uh, indigenous monsters and ghosts and stuff, because I've, I've done some research and plan to do more. And it's always been an interest of mine. Um, and so... That'll be a gigantic, gigantuous box set because I'm going to have to figure out how to give people enough background that they can figure this out and not just look at the box and like the people did when they bought Bushido and go, okay, what do I do with this now? <laughs> <laughs> that's always a uh, that's always a challenge when you um, well, if you're going to buy something in a setting or a milieu that you're unfamiliar with. Yeah, yeah, you should know that you're liable to be wasting your money. It's like, and I'll, I'll use the TSR product, the classic one, Empire of the Petal Throne. Yeah. We knew that a whole bunch of D&Ders would buy that because we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. knew, and at times of sober, sobriety, and I don't mean the drinking kind, just clear thinking. Sure, yeah, sure. I knew that that little boom wouldn't last long. Because what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the hell is in a hoogie, yeah, 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 with four <laughs> legs and four arms and looks like a fire plug? And you're, you know, and the yeah. language, Soliani and all that. And the only reason I know that's because I was constantly bombarded with that crap when we were doing the development in the, in the too small building at the time. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you, needed, you needed a, 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 a freshman level. <clears throat> college <clears throat> textbook on on um, the empire of the pedal throne to be able to play the game yeah a lot of really neat monsters in there and i know a lot of people ended up scavenging out monsters uh to use in their D, &D games and um and and you know it's just it's such a niche game i'm i'm i don't mean any disrespect to the estate about mar barker or anything like that it's just such a niche game we didn't see that, or I don't think we'd have gotten involved in it. Right, right. It was so niche. And, and as, you know, various bits and pieces were coming into to, uh, the, the uh, offices. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Where's the explanation? Well, that is the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> we may have some problems here later on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I don't want to be that guy that writes something that's so I may have to put a, a great deal of my writing in explaining the myths of the cloud people right. and the, 
the politics of the region at the time and that, and that's fine. I've done tons and tons of reading over the years. Um, it's just going to take time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for taking the time to talk about us about your project and, and so much. Yeah, you can cut and edit this however the hell you want. I don't care. <laughs> oh, well, we might cut I it. don't say anything I don't back up later. Hmm. No, this I'm is, careful, this though. Is, yeah. If you notice how I dealt to come out on a couple of topics. I don't always name names and, you know, but I'm I back up if I said it. Okay. Now, occasionally I say something rash and I eat my words later, <laughs> but you know, if you speak enough, you're bound to taste a few of them. Hmm. Yeah. I well. certainly do qualify on the speak enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you though. I, well, we really appreciate um, uh, you taking time to talk to us about it, sharing uh, a lot of your great experience and perspective. And uh, you're going to total con you've said. Yep. Going yeah, to well, Total we'll that. yeah, That's yeah. Uh, I think the, I think I can leave here on Wednesday the twenty third. I come back on Sunday, but I'll be there running games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Now That's I'm going cool. to Gary Con in about uh, three and a half or four weeks after that, hmm. and um, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to North Texas in uh, the first full week of June. Thank you very much, sir. This has been great. Well, it's been my pleasure. 